Empty since the early 70s, the roof and floors had nearly disintegrated. Trespassers and scavengers had taken anything of value inside the house. Even after Jerome bought the place, the carved limestone scroll work on the steps of the entrance of the house had been stolen. Included in the purchase was the two and a half acres of land surrounding the house, but sometime earlier a half acre plot of land fronting the house had been sold off. The house trailer on the site was in a bad state of repair and the property had become quite an eyesore. I had told him, you know, I, was just, no point, I wasn't going to go over there until either the trailer was gone or he had possession of it because there wasn't no point doing anything to it then. After nearly two years of negotiations, Jerome obtained the half acre on May 21, 2001. Immediately after assuming the property, he began to haul stuff away and clean things up around the trailer. He kind of cleaned it up and make it presentable so we can store, store things in it I'll need to, to repair the old house. When we had the, the backhoe and some of the uh, equipment, to be able to move things out. We had to take the trees out, the perimeter of the house, so we could get around. So we cleared out all the junk. On the outside, I'd say 15 to 20 pickup loads to the transfer station in Lafayette. And probably the heavy metals and stuff, we probably took five or six big loads, tons of that stuff in. Old farm stuff, rims, and solid steel and so forth, that was taken in. We mostly had to clear out all of the, all of the uh, washing machine, uh, old deep freezes, several, well, that's three or four refrigerators, old metal bed things, rusted uh, thing, and uh, uh, part of the structure had fallen into the basement. Everything was falling into the basement. Collecting and piecing together the history of this house has been like working a jigsaw puzzle with many odd shaped pieces that fit together correctly somewhere. Like any old abandoned home, there are many stories associated with the old brick. Stories about the people who occupied this house and the lives touched by this property are coming forth. And the historical puzzle for the old brick house has begun to take form. Family friend Betty Reed is the great-great-granddaughter of the person who bought the land where the brick house was built. This is a land grant. In addition to bringing the original land grant for the old brick property to a dinner at the Lafayette restaurant, Betty provided details on her family's history and their migration to Tippecanoe County. This is the people in the old brick. They, they build it. And do you notice they don't smile? <laughs> they never smiled in those days. I was surprised to think that they, the one article here says that they were wealthy because I always felt it was because they worked so hard they looked so sad, but I don't know. In 1954, Betty and Bernard Reed moved into the frame house next door. This picture was taken then. According to Betty and Bernard, during this time the old brick was a house of prostitution. Red light, I call it red light. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if it had a red light or not, I never knew, but I don't think I ever met her. No, you didn't. I know you Lena Carlson is a volunteer at the Historical Association. Her longtime fascination with old houses includes the old brick. Lena has created a web page with pictures of the brick house and recently wrote an article about the house in the Lafayette paper. I've been seeing this house every couple of years since I was really small and and I you know even when it's just in absolute horrible condition with the, you know, the terrible mobile home that was sitting in front of it, I still thought it was just the most gorgeous building. Sandy Yemen saw Lena's newspaper article and was excited to see the house where her mother was born and spent the happiest days of her life. I've been watching this house and I kept, oh, hoping that somebody wouldn't let the walls cave in and let it go because it's got so much history. It's got a lot of my family in it. Fascination with the old brick house goes all the way back to the 1870s, when someone felt the house was significant enough to be included in an 1878 atlas of Tippecanoe County. Jerome's family purchased this atlas at the Tippecanoe County Historical Association and presented it to him on Father's Day of 2001. That's the brick house. That's a brick house. This is you as king and you're holding your staff, which is the golf club and your uh, You did this drawing all by yourself? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Atlas map. 
uh, Tippecanoe County in the year 1878. 1878. This corresponds to what? Where's the Where's the ruby at here? Okay. And this is, I guess, is the diamond. Okay. And we're going to make it look just like that. The architectural style of the house is Italianate. Italianate was one of the most prevalent Victorian era housing styles from the mid to late 1800s. Popularized by the 19th century pattern books of landscape architect Andrew Jackson Downing, the Italian style became so indigenous for a while it was simply called the American style. The development of cast iron and pressed metal technology made producing decorative elements like the brackets and the cornices more efficient. A vernacular style of architecture, Italianate was suitable for many different building materials and budgets. Lafayette and the surrounding area have several Italianate homes built during this time period. Homes in the Italianate architectural style usually have a hipped roof, they all have wide overhanging eaves supported by oversized decorative brackets made to look as if they're supporting nearly flat roofs. Some of them have a tower or a cupola. They are almost always at least two stories tall with tall narrow windows that are arched or rounded often with molded window caps. The old brick house contains many of these features. Down this gravel road there's a farm we used to own grass there's overgrown I walk it back alone Leaves fall like the years And all these autumns lay to rest My mother's cotton dress My father's cigarettes Your walk was worn then By laughter in a summer storm Now overgrown Still footsteps fall and lead me on and on Weeds grow high through fields that I would run through with my dog Past the creek and holla log Chasing dragonflies and frogs Dinner's hot have I forgotten how these shadows slip away? Ends of endless summer days This path will take you back that way The walk was worn then By laughter in a summer storm Now overgrown still footsteps fall And lead me on and on is near I know but fear the changes it may show burning sun and crushing snows blistered pain roof sag and low one last turn past Christmas ferns and shady climbing trees my brothers climb with me I climb once more to see the walk was worn then Laughter in a summer storm. Now overgrown, still footsteps fall and lead me on and on. The branches bend as I ascend, the hand holds old and true, gently swaying towards the view. There, between the branches and the leaves that softly fall, we haven't changed at all. The walk was worn then by laughter and a summer storm. Now overgrown, still footsteps fall. And 